take that off the wall. Let's go ahead and take this outside. Yeah, but first at five, the man in that video seen taking a portrait of a disgraced former mayor from Portland City Hall has now been arrested. This comes after he posted another video of himself burning. There it is right there, the photo of Neil Goldschmidt last night. Thank you for joining us. I'm Maggie Vespa and KGW's Art Edwards is live with the details on this arrest. Art, good evening. Good afternoon. Jeff Black was arrested earlier today uh, at his home in Portland. Now this all comes after he took that portrait of Neil Goldschmidt from uh, City Hall late last week. Now we have some video of the arrest this morning. Police went right to his house. They made the arrest. Blake actually uh, recorded and streamed that uh, that arrest as it was going on this morning as he was arrested by the Portland police. He is charged now with criminal mischief, theft, tampering with evidence are the three charges right now. He was taken and booked into the Multnomah County Jail. He has been released from the jail. Now he burned that portrait last night at his home uh, and he actually filmed that as well. He recorded that as well and live streamed that as well. Uh, he took the portrait late last week from City Hall. is a portrait of Neil Goldschmidt. Uh, former governor, former mayor of Portland. When he was uh, governor, he confessed to having sex with a 13-year-old girl while he was the mayor of Portland. Now, that confession came after the statute of limitations had run out. Now, Black took the portrait late last week. What he said at the time was that it should not have been up at City Hall. It needed to be taken. And he said he was willing to take the punishment for what Neil Goldschmidt has done. So he is now out of jail. He does face those three charges of criminal mischief, theft, tampering with evidence, uh, and he will end up going to court on those charges. Uh, we're going to get a chance, we hope, to talk with him a little bit later today and hear more about what he did, why he did it, and what he expects to be happening now that he has been arrested and charged with a crime. Back to you. All right, Art Edwards live for us with that. Art, thank you very much. And now to a bizarre and tragic story out of Southern Oregon. A man known for being a former Mouseketeer went missing. And when police searched his home near Medford, they found a body. And that's frankly all we know so far. They're not saying yet whether it is the body of 76-year-old Dennis Day seen there. Back in the mid-50s, he was a cast member on the Mickey Mouse Club. Day's disappearance went largely unnoticed for months. Family reportedly just recently got involved at starting a Facebook page called Help Us Find Dennis Day. That's where they posted these images. Local and state police, along with forensic investigators, were on scene Thursday. We'll bring you updates as we get them. And at the same time, deputies in Clark County are investigating a possible kidnapping after they say a woman sped off from a routine traffic stop as her passenger struggled to get out of the car. It happened early this morning near Meadows Drive in 66. The traffic stop was for an equipment violation and deputies say the woman took off behind the wheel, reaching speeds of 100 miles per hour with deputies close behind. She led them to Portland where authorities laid spike strips and stopped the car. That's where this video is from. They arrested the driver and they say her name is Sherry Ramsey. The passenger, it turns out, had unrelated warrants. Still, kidnapping charges may follow for Ramsey. We'll keep you posted. And at the same time, take a look at this damage right here to a Portland police car. Police say this was caused by an impaired driver who crashed into the car with an officer inside. Early this morning, two officers were investigating a report of a suspicious person in northeast Portland near 79th Avenue and Sandy Boulevard. Police say a car with no headlights rear-ended one of their patrol cars. Thankfully, the officer was not seriously hurt. Jeremy Heisler, obviously seen here, was arrested and taken to the hospital for minor injuries. Well, it's been a bit of a stormy day out there today. You may have noticed. Here's a live look at the coast in Cannon Beach. You can see the waves absolutely rolling in there. And then here's a look at Pacific City or what you can see of a look from this camera. Beachgoers were being warned there about the possibility of sneaker waves. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri is here now with a look at what we can expect for tonight. Hey, Joe. Hey there, Maggie. It's going to get pretty nasty here in just the next couple of hours, and especially going into the overnight hours. We do have some watches and warnings I want to talk 
talking to you about before we start seeing just how much rain and when it arrives throughout our area. That purple color is the high surf advisory. That's in effect until early tomorrow morning. Waves tonight and into tomorrow anywhere from 20, maybe 30 feet at the peak. This green color is a flood watch that's really impacting the central Oregon coast and throughout the central and southern part of the Willamette Valley. There could be a chance we get some of those watches and warnings issued from the National Weather Service later tonight and into tomorrow because we're going to be seeing some very wet conditions. So far, the Portland area, at least the northern part of the metro area, is dry as a bone, but that's going to be changing here in just the next couple of hours. We are picking up some showers near McMinnville and Salem and throughout the foothills of the mountains. So as we go into the later part of tonight, we're going to remain dry basically between now and 8, 9 o'clock. I have it stopped here at 10 o'clock. That's when we'll really start to see the heavy bands of rain moving through, and they don't really let up until early tomorrow morning. By 3 a.m., you can see some of those yellows and oranges moving into the high desert and throughout the foothills of the mountains. That is the area that's going to be seeing the brunt of this system. Uh, some rainfall amounts near Detroit Lake could be close to four, maybe four and a half inches of rain. I'll talk more about that and the wind that we're looking at too over the next 12 to 18 hours. That's coming up in about 10 minutes. All right, Joe, a lot to watch. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Well, walkability is, of course, one of the perks and living in a city like Portland, we love it. But a deadly corridor in southeast Portland has people living near there feeling pretty overlooked. And now, after years of studies, design and planning, they're getting a safety upgrade. KGW's Brittany Falkers was at today's project groundbreaking, and she has that story. The Outer Powell project is now officially underway. For people in the community we spoke to who say they often feel forgotten, this upcoming construction is a long time coming. It's taken a long, 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 long time. Teresa Soto says over the years, she's seen too many close calls to count on Powell Boulevard in southeast Portland. You risk your life just to go across the street. The deadly roadway is one ODOT has deemed a high crash corridor. But a new project, more than a decade in the making, aims to change that. And I said, I want to live long enough to see this project, you know, completed. On Saturday, Soto took the stage alongside Oregon Representative Janelle Bynum as the Outer Powell Transportation Safety Project broke ground. Let's give it up for sidewalks. Phase one will improve the stretch from Southeast 122nd to 136th Avenues. The full project will cover four miles, creating sidewalks where there were none before, safer crosswalks, new curb separated bike lanes, and centered turn lanes for safer turns and to reduce traffic. We need a safe way to cross uh, in different parts of the corridor uh, so that we're not literally playing Frogger with our lives. For a community that feels they've been neglected, this couldn't come any sooner. It was easy to get disheartened, but to have it finally a reality, to know that, that we have been seen, our voices have been heard, and that there's a huge investment in our community and our future, it's powerful. As mentioned, this is just phase one for the Outer Powell project. Community members we spoke to say there are many more roadways here on Portland's east side that need some attention. Brittany Falkers, KGW News. And by the way, this was part of the project that was made possible through a new state law passed in 2017, which included $20 million to completely rebuild that four mile stretch and construction is expected to last through 2020. So for updates, find a link to that story at KGW.com. All right, take a look at this crazy scene in South Seattle. 24 power poles fell down along this mile long stretch of road, trapping two people in a car and knocking out power to thousands. This happened yesterday afternoon and those people were rescued once the power lines were deactivated. When we heard and saw a big explosion from the power line, a big flash of light and they all came tumbling down. We're just so glad that the people in the car were, were relatively unscathed. Yeah, glad to say the least. So Seattle City Light is still trying to figure out what caused those poles to just fall over. They say of the 24 poles that went down, some had been replaced as recently as five years ago. And the ones not replaced were considered to be in good condition. 
All right, over to sports now. And for Ducks fans still feeling gutted after watching the men's and last night the women's basketball seasons come to a close, we bring you something to look forward to. Let's roll that tape because spring football practice has been underway for a few weeks. And today, Coach Mario Cristobal invited cameras for an open practice. Players told us these sessions have been intense. A lot of attention to detail, watching game and practice footage. They say in short, spring ball is no joke. We made it a point of emphasis. This is here. This is camp mentality. This is a physical and a strong step that we will not ever skip. I mean, at Oregon, spring ball means something. Yeah, it's huge. It's uh, just got to keep climbing. Um, definitely, we, we've made a lot of mistakes this spring, but we're learning from them, and, and uh, that's what it's all about. So we'll get better and, and get ready for fall. And speaking of, the duck season kicks off August 31st with a home opener against Auburn University. Well, attorney Michael Avenetti is making more claims against Nike, saying the company made bribes to college basketball players. He says this includes former Oregon Duck Bull Bull, and he tweeted out documents that he says shows evidence. Avenatti has been charged with trying to extort $20 million from Nike, and prosecutors say he threatened to release damaging information about the company if they didn't pay him. Nike says it's cooperating with investigators.